I want to talk about Castaway. My favorite Tom Hanks movie. I did a, we do this rewatchables movie podcast. I hosted that one by myself because I felt like I had to because Chuck was on the island for over an hour. <laughs> so I, I had no co-host. I just did the yeah, whole thing yeah. by oh, myself. That's, all right, that's good. It seemed like an intensely personal movie for you. And, you know, you had to put on weight, which you gained yeah. like 50 pounds. And then you uh, had you to know, take uh, yeah, six yeah. months off and then lose a bunch of weight and then start Actually, filming we, it again. We, we, took a, we took a whole year off. We worked on that. Uh, Bill Broyles and myself worked on that movie for four years, just trying to figure out the three acts. Yeah. And we really We really only had an act and a half. It came about because I read an article about FedEx. Um, and I did not realize the common sense uh, business model that FedEx had. And when I read that um, planes, huge planes, not 747s, but like DC-10s, you know, filled with nothing but packages, left Los Angeles to fly to Australia every single night at two o'clock in the morning, every single night. So that's a crew of uh, probably six for, you know, because you got to switch pilots on the way over. And so six people and nothing but packages flew across the Pacific every single day, every single night, one going and one coming. So actually there's two planes. And I thought, oof, what happens if one of those goes down? And from that came, came the movie. Bill Broyles and I were working on a couple of, I, I, I knew Bill because he, he had written a, a Apollo 13 and we'd lived close to each other. And I was a big fan because he had, you know, he had started Texas Monthly and he'd been the Newsweek editor for a while. And he was one of the forces behind China Beach, the TV show. Mm. So we were trying to work out something else. And one day he said to me, what else do you have? Yeah, I mean, what, what else are you thinking about? And I told him this story about FedEx guys. And I just thought, I, I think it would be amazing to make a movie about a guy um, who truly is stranded <laughs> for four years. Um and so that's I, a, so that's the act you have. You have one and a half acts, but you know you have at least that. I knew we, what land, I, I, we We worked on how it, how he got there, and then we worked. And and Bill said, "Well, you know the the fact is, just finding the finding food, shelter, water, and fire. Well, that would that would be dramatic structure unto itself. I mean, that would be there'd be real drama and all those things." And I said, "Yeah, exactly." Uh, so we worked on it for four years, and then we talked to Bob Zemeckis. Uh, briefly, and he said, "Ah, oh, that's an interesting idea." Yeah, well, I, mean, uh, I don't know, man. You gotta uh, hard to hard to you know alone on an island. That's gonna be tough. And then, how does he get off? And we said, "Well, we had ideas like the Sports Illustrated swimsuit uh, edition shows up with models, you know, in an abandoned, you know, at a desert island. We thought that would be it." <laughs> we thought maybe we never came to pirates or anything like that. We never had bad guys, but we thought maybe, you know, some sort of like lifestyles of the rich and family. You get on your own magical island. You know, we thought maybe those guys would show up. Bob never bought any of that. And he went away for two years. <laughs> then he came back. <laughs> he came back and what did he say? Yeah. Hey, you're still working on that. Uh, we called it Chuck of the Jungle for the while. You're still working on that thing, Chuck of the Jungle? And I said, well, yeah, we are. And we, we still don't. And he said, well, you know what you need there? And then he mapped out um, the theme of the rest of Act Two and all of Act Three. And once that happened, then it was just uh, we had to figure out a way in order to make it because with that four-year gap in the middle, yeah, that there's no way you could do a special effects version of that. And I was dead set against the idea of putting on a fake beard in the South Pacific and swimming in the ocean because they're impossible to keep on and they're very uncomfortable. And it would take hours every day to put it on and take it off. So there's no way to shoot it. And Bob said well, that. Let, well, let's be yeah. honest though. You have a ton of juice at this point. You have the, you're probably one of the few actors who has the ability to convince a studio to make a movie that you're going to shut down production for a year uh, and then go back. You'd think so, wouldn't you? <laughs> yeah, you, I would say you'd yes. you think so. That would, be, that would be the assumption, wouldn't it? Yeah. You think, oh, yeah, you get to do it. No, <laughs> no, <laughs> it's still it's still just money. Yeah. And it's still just, you know, hey, not all your movies are hits. You know, there's that. And there's like, well, we don't we don't we don't have it in our you know, we have a slate of films. We don't have room for anything like this. And they said, well, you know, Bob, Bob, Bob Zemeckis, Bob. Hey, Gump. Hey, you know, we got a track record. And they go, yeah, yeah, I don't know. This is an expensive movie. 
And Bob floated to them the, the idea of, he says, well, you know, if we had any, you know, we had any guts, here's how we'd make this movie. I said, mm. what? Well, we'd make the fat part and then take a year off and you lose all the weight. And we'd come back and shoot the second half, the skinny part, with a year in between. And that's never been done at this never, point. Never, no, no. I mean, no, there's, there's movies that are like, you know, there's a number of films. Uh, like the Linklater stuff where they yeah, come back, that, but not, they, they not like that. this. No, not in, not in, uh, <laughs> not 12 years later. The, because here's what has to happen. You know, a production office stay has to stay open. Cash flow has to be maintained. The, the crew has to be, be held. The only, the only advantage it had was only one, well, really only one actor, I guess. Although, there, you know, yeah. there was Helen Hunt and uh, Nick Searcy and a few others. But Bob, Bob struck a deal with Stu, uh, 20th Century Fox. He said, we'll make the first half of this movie. And in the year between, I'll make another movie for you guys. We'll oh, so you- one for them, one for you. Yeah, there was, uh, he made, uh, with Harrison Ford and Michelle Pfeiffer, he made What Lies Beneath in Good the one. year off that I had where I was off trying to get, uh, trying to lose the weight and grow the beard and all that stuff. So while he was doing that, um, I was also working on putting together Band of Brothers. This was like 1999, going into 2000. And when I was off doing a research trip, starving and getting skinny with big hair and all that kind of stuff, I fell in a hole in Berkdus Garden and separated my shoulder, dislocated my shoulder, uh. and had to recover from that for six weeks. And that, that made me lose some of my physical regimen. But I was still able to show up very hairy and very skinny. And we went right back to the same island <laughs> where we had left um, a year before and started shooting. And we did, you know, we were figuring out. And in the meantime, in the year between, Bob put together the first half of the movie. And we watched it in real time. And then he said, okay, now that's what we have. What are we going to do? And we, the, the, the permutations that the screenplay had gone through in that first half, for example, you know, Chuck, Chuck Nolan talked to himself a lot. He was, you know, explaining, you know, because you want everybody who reads the script to understand what he's thinking. And, and Bob was always saying, well, that ain't cinema. That's, you know, that's dialogue. And I said, once we got to the island and we were, we literally shot, came to the, I swear to God, the first shot of Chuck on the island when he was fat. I said, Bob, I don't know why I'm talking here. Why, who am I? He said, I don't think I should talk unless I think somebody is here. Yeah. Or there's a, you know, there's, there's one moment where I sort of say to the, to the pilot who died that I buried, I kind of say, well, that's it. And that's it. And so Bob said, yeah, let's do it. You know, so no dialogue unless who's there. Hey, save me. Some, or Wilson, you know, that stuff was there. Um, and uh, it really did impact the second half of everything we did because it kind of like jump started it. And uh, we ended up dreaming bigger and getting all sorts of stuff that wasn't in the wasn't on the pages when we returned. Then in the uh, in the. Was it the first half or the, no, in the second half when I was, I can't remember. I can't remember if I, if I made fire in the first half or the second half. No, it was half. the first half. I'm it here. I'm here. Half, I remember yeah. everything. Yeah. yeah. It's when the I'm, first half. When I, when I made fire in the first half, I was, I had a slight cut, a blister on my knee. And when I was kneeling in the sand, a piece of organic material got under my skin and gave me a staph infection. Oh. infection. That put me in the hospital uh, for three days and kept me uh, uh, away from work for three weeks. So we lost three weeks. But Bob loved it because we were able to rewrite some pages and, and rebuild a bunch of the set and stuff like that. So that was that was just one huge, big, massive physiological adventure every step of the way. At the same time, we were really trying to we were really trying to crack. Uh, a different sort of emotive plane of well, what does all this mean? What does it mean when you know, everybody thinks you're dead. The logic of why he's gone, that was, that was the only thing I cared about. I mm. said, once, once we can understand why he's on this island, and that's where Bob came in with how graphic the crash was and the death of the pilot and uh, the, the desperate uh, need for fire, water, shelter, uh, food, and then last of all things, company, somebody to talk to. Uh, Bob, Bob, Bob came and was like, you know, 
because we have interviewed just said, oh, I, I just absentmindedly drew a, drew a face on a volleyball and called it Wilson. And Bob said, nah, you can't not. It, it's, it, it, you, you can't just decide that. It's got to like be a surprise. I, I think, I think, I think he should be, I think he should be uh, an offspring of Chuck's own blood. And I said, well, let, how could we, well, let's figure out a way for me to get cut. And yeah. I get so mad, I pick up the volleyball and throw it. And then inadvertently is this mark that looks like a face that, I, anyway, so the rest, you know what the rest of the movie is. So. Uh, that's well, you know, kind of thing. I, could, I could talk to the cows come home about. And then we came up with this amazing moment, <laughs> you know, the first scene with Helen Hunt and we had a Luma Cray. We, I could go on and on and on. There's interesting lessons about that, though. It, it took so many years to innovate and add yeah. to stuff. I think that's one of the reasons it's a special movie. And I remember I saw it in the theater. I really liked it. I didn't totally understand the ending and it didn't work for me. And the reason I didn't understand it was I literally didn't understand it. And then when I saw it again, when it made the cable rounds, I, it was one of those, oh, I'm an idiot. <laughs> he turns around and Bettina, like he's turning back. Yeah. Like, cause I'm just, he's on the road, he's looking around, but you realize right. the way it's shot, he turns, he turns, he turns, and then he turns to the place and he's turning back to where his car was, had just come from. Yeah, it, it's a lot idea. when you're in the theater, you know, especially if yeah. you've had some popcorn and some M&Ms and some soda, yeah, maybe you're not following of, it yeah. entirely. A lot of this is the thing that comes around because you can sort. I mean, that one might have been one of the early films where you could actually see it anytime you wanted to because yep. you know um, you didn't have to wait for it to play on HBO or something like that. I think you could actually pull it up or you know certainly have the DVD. You could rent it from Blockbuster anytime you wanted to. But Bob was that that was that was not the first movie, but that was the one where all three of us, everybody who was working on Bob, myself, and Bill. That was when we said, there's no, there's no hurrying this process. Yeah. We just have to figure out what we want to say and then take the time in order to say it. As opposed to, hey, guys, come on, suns go down. You got to shoot something, you know, say something funny here and get us out of the sea. Look, we'll cut here. We'll cut here. We'll go boom, boom, boom. Bob doesn't, Bob doesn't shoot that way. Bob, Bob says, well, hmm, I don't know. Well, what do you think we should do here? And this is when we're on an island. Mm. I weigh 140 pounds and I have lice crawling around. In my is that head. how much you weighed? No, no. I got down to... Um, it had to be like 160, right? No, no. I wanted to. I'm six feet tall and I wanted to get down to 159. I did Oof. not. I got down to about 171, I think, uh, because I lost those six weeks. I lost yeah. those six weeks. I couldn't do my workout. For six weeks, but uh, by that time CGI came in, and they were able to do a little bit of body sculpting. But I was, I was, I was very skinny. I was very skinny and very hungry. I think one of the reasons that movie's always on, and my theory with this stuff is these movies are always on because the channels they know and the streamers, they're basically they're going for clicks, right? They're going for eyeballs, and if somebody is repeatedly watching the same movie, and Castaway is one of those, it's had this twenty-one year shelf life. I think one of the reasons is it's a weirdly relaxing movie. Like there's a vibe, you're mm -hmm. on an island, it's quiet. Mm -hmm. There's no musical score for like no over music. an hour. Yeah, yeah. And you can just yeah. kind of have it on as you're doing other things. Meanwhile, there's this horrible plane crash in it. You know, and it's, it's like, kinda, oh, Castaway's it, on, great. It's kind of like a cross between this old house and Bob. Who's the, who's the guy that painted the pictures, you know? Uh, the sound of the guy who <laughs> oh, painted yeah. the pictures. Yeah, guy, yeah, yeah. Guy, guy with the big hair. It's, right. They just made a documentary about him. Yeah, let's let's add a little tree here. Yeah, just, but it's it, it has that kind of like tactile feel. Bob to Ross, golf, golf, yeah. Bob Ross, a golf yeah. in the background kind of sound. Oh, oh, that's a lovely layup there on seventeen. That's I think gonna play. it's kind of crazy now when you look back. Like it did, it didn't do as well as the Oscars as I think people thought. And I, and some of that was back. It was you were in that weird. Michael Jordan was in that mode too when he lost to Carl Malone. He lost the MVP that year because everyone was kind of. His excellence has been established. People get bored after a while. You had just made all of these great movies in a row. And at some point, it starts bouncing off people. It doesn't seem well, real they, anymore. Yeah, but it's, you know, it's also, there's it, the whole thing is a sweepstakes. You know, every year there's this kind of like big ass playoff that goes on. And, yeah. you know, a lot, a lot of times you know, the first seed is eliminated, you know, and the, 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 <laughs> 
the the team that only won 88 games for the year actually starts playing for the World Series. You know, it's, it's <laughs> right. like, and there's there's no reason to get worked up about it because at the end of the day, you know, you get invited to the pancake breakfast, you get a little free stuff, and uh, you get to hobnob with all the other famous people in the famous people's club. It's it's not a it's yeah. not bad. It's always fun. And then I got to tell you, most people, uh, I. I I am constantly congratulated for winning Best Actor for Castaway. Really? So people oh, can't yeah. even keep track of it. They, they don't know. They, <laughs> they don't. just know they, you they, won they, too. They know. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I just, I just love the Philadelphian Castaway. I just loved how you won. You know. It's like, okay, well, thank you very much, and move on from there. 